This is part one of our video tutorial on the various types of organic reactions for grade 12 chemistry. Now, this is intended to be a brief summary of the major reactions you will encounter, and so some of the minor reactions may not be covered in this uh, video tutorial. Now, what you see in front of you is a very general overview of the different types of reactions we'll be looking at. I know it looks scary and kind of confusing at first, but really it's not too bad. Once you get over the first, I don't know, 35% of these reactions, you'll find that a lot of them are repetitive, extremely repetitive, and uh, the reverse reactions are pretty much the exact opposite of what you did in the forward reactions. So, let's get started. In general, there are four very broad categories of organic reactions. These are addition reactions, elimination reactions, and substitution reactions. Now, uh, oxidation reduction reactions, also known as redox, tend to occur at the same time as one of these three reactions. As such, you'll find that some reactions can fall under more than one category at any given time. So before we get started with the more specific types of reactions, let's get into the generic ones first and just try and recognize the patterns that they hold. The first type of reaction we'll be looking at is the addition reaction. Uh, this normally occurs when a small molecule or element or compound or functional group is added to a multiple bond. So that would be either a double or a triple bond. Normally, carbon can only form four bonds, so one, two, three, four. However, when one of the multiple bonds is broken, basically you are freeing up a bond site, allowing a, a carbon on either side of the double bond to tack on or add on an extra element or functional group. In this case, the hydrogen and the bromine can be tacked on to either of these two carbons. Similarly, breaking a triple bond provides you with one extra bonding site on either carbon, which in this case is taken up by the bromine. So if we have two bromines, one would go on either side, and instead you're left with a double bond. The next type of reaction is known as an elimination reaction, which is basically the reverse of an addition reaction. Instead of adding on elements, you are removing them and forming a new molecule, a smaller molecule over here. Generally, it tends to be a water, as you can see in this case over here, the hydroxyl group and a hydrogen, OH and an H, come apart to form water, where we have the OH over here and the hydrogen over here. You'll notice in this case that uh, sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst. That is to say it's a molecule that accelerates the uh, rate of reaction but doesn't actually participate in the reaction itself. You'll find that sulfuric acid is quite often used as a catalyst in almost uh, all of the chemical reactions we'll be looking at. In any case, uh, by removing these uh, or eliminating these two uh, functional groups, the OH and the H, you have an extra bond site available on either carbon. You can't have that so it collapses together to form a double bond. So with the addition reaction, you were removing the multiple bond to provide an extra set of bond locations for you to tack on or add on elements. But in an elimination reaction, it's the exact opposite. You're removing the functional groups and then allowing the uh, bonds to collapse on each other to form a double bond instead. Similarly over here, the hydrogen and the bromine are removed or eliminated to form hydrogen bromide or hydrobromic acid in this case, and the single bonds that are left over collapse down to form a double bond. So don't worry too much about what type of catalyst is being used right now, well at least not yet anyway. Uh, for now I just want you to get comfortable with the overall patterns for elimination and addition reactions. Finally, the last type of reaction we'll be looking at is known as a substitution reaction. Now, substitution reactions are very similar to displacement reactions in the sense that either a hydrogen atom or a functional group is being replaced by a different functional group. So in this case, I have a molecule AY and the functional group X. The Y bumps out the X and is replacing the uh, Y in this case over here. So functional group Y is now attached to my uh, hydrocarbon and AX is being popped out. So here we have a alcohol molecule, ethanol, where the functional group is OH. Then I have hydroiodic acid, and so what happens is the OH group is being replaced or substituted for an iodine, so a halogen. And now we have iodoethane and water being replaced. So the H over here and the OH over here combine to form water. Now whether you represent water as H2O or HOH, it really doesn't matter to me. However, it seems to be the preference to write as HOH just so you remember that the hydroxyl group pops out 
and joins the hydrogen group here to form the water. It makes a little more sense this way. Similarly, uh, the bromine is being substituted for an NH2 group. Now I can represent ammonia as NH2 with another hydrogen bond to it. And so what happens is the NH2 substitutes the bromine and bromine takes its place over here and we get HBr, hydrobromic acid, as well as the amino group being substituted in. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, how did I know the NH3 is supposed to be written as an NH2 and an H? So the amino group NH2 bonds over here, whereas the bromine bonds with the H to form hydrobromic acid. Uh, my answer to this is, now you do know, because I've just shown you. Really, there's only about three or four patterns altogether that we're going to be looking at in this course. And once you know those three or four patterns, it should come as second nature to you. So for instance, you'll find that a lot of examples have water popping out. And as so long as you remember that water is H and an OH, you can recognize that hydroxyl group usually gets bumped out and the iodine gets substituted in. So I know it's hard at the first, uh, in, the, in the first place, in, in the beginning, it is kind of hard to see these patterns. But once you do enough of these questions, you'll notice that there aren't too many possibilities on what's going to happen next. Generally, you will recognize what's going to happen uh, and which ones can be substituted or eliminated or added on. So don't worry too much right now. Uh, just go with the flow. Once we get over the first 30% of these reactions, you'll find it gets very, very, very repetitive and you will begin to see these patterns, or at least I hope you'll begin to see these patterns. In any case, uh, the next reaction I want to look at is a subcategory of substitution reactions, and that would be condensation. So in a condensation reaction, it is a type of substitution reaction whereby two organic molecules, in this case a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, combine together to produce a single organic molecule. In this case, it is one large ester. And normally a smaller molecule is popped out, uh, and generally you'll find, again, it is water. So again, the hydroxyl group combines with the hydrogen to form water, HOH. So exactly like I said before, these patterns become pretty predictable when you see them recurring over and over and over again. Now, whenever a water molecule is produced in a reaction, you can also call it a dehydration reaction. You're essentially dehydrating the situation and taking out water. Uh, so yes, this is called a condensation reaction, whereby two smaller molecules combine together to form a large molecule, and of course a small molecule pops out. However, in this case, if there's that small molecule that pops out is a water, you can also call it a dehydration reaction. So this reaction is falls under two categories, condensation as well as dehydration. Now, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the uh, sulfuric acid is again being used as a catalyst. But more importantly, I want you to take a look at the double-headed arrow. So the double-headed arrow means that the Ford reaction occurs, but so does the reverse reaction. In this case, uh, the Ford reaction is when a carboxylic acid and an alcohol combine together to create an ester, but at the same time a water molecule pops out. However, if I go in the reverse reaction and I add a water molecule to the ester, this bond over here will break up with the hydrogen attaching onto the uh, oxygen over here to form the alcohol that was originally here. And then the hydroxyl group attaches onto the carboxylic acid at this point over here to form the carboxylic acid. So this reaction, the one going in reverse, is known as hydrolysis. So as you can see over here, water being tacked on, and you form the hydroxyl group and the alcohol over here from the H and the OH. All right, so like I said, um, a lot of these reactions are pretty much repeats of themselves. I mean, it look uh, really confusing when you're looking at the overall roadmap for the whole uh, organic reactions flowchart over here. But you'll find that basically, whenever you're going back and forth, back and forth, it's just the same reaction, only in reverse. Uh, so just memorize one way, one direction, and memorize the name of the other direction, and you've pretty much got it. All right, so don't freak out. It just looks a lot worse than it really is. Finally, the last topic I want to talk about is the oxidation and reduction types of reactions. Normally, these occur simultaneously, meaning uh, when you have an oxidation reaction occurring, you're also having a reduction reaction occurring. So essentially, while one reactant is being oxidized, the other one is being reduced. For now, we will be concentrating on the organic reactants only. Uh, as such, uh, we're only dealing with one aspect at any given time. So we're looking at oxidizing agents and reducing agents in general, but primarily we're looking at how do they affect 
the hydrocarbon, right? If it's being oxidized or is it being reduced? So with an oxidation reaction, it occurs when a carbon forms more bonds with oxygen, or you can also call it an oxidation reaction if less bonds with hydrogen are occurring. So in this case, when I'm adding on an oxidizing agent, uh, just a generic oxidizing agent, we don't have to really state which one it is, but when I add on an oxidizing agent to an alcohol, I am forming A, more bonds with the oxygen, so originally I only had one bond with oxygen, but now I have two bonds with oxygen, as well as being in a situation with less bonds with hydrogen. So originally this carbon had been bonded to a hydrogen, now that hydrogen is gone. I mean, we've taken away this bond and we tacked it onto this oxygen instead. And in the process, we have lost the hydrogen. It is out of there. Similarly, another situation is uh, with an aldehyde where we already have the double bond, the C double bond O, so we had two bonds with oxygens, but now we can get rid of this hydrogen by oxidizing it, and we are left with a hydroxyl group. So we now have three oxygen bonds, whereas over here we only had two oxygen bonds in the first place. Now the exact opposite of an oxidation reaction is a reduction reaction. And essentially it's, well, the exact opposite. Uh, instead of forming more bonds with oxygen, you are forming less bonds with oxygen. Instead of forming less bonds with hydrogen, you are forming more bonds with hydrogen. So either situation, whenever you're in either situation, you are having a reduction reaction. So over here we had a C double bond O, where we had two bonds with an oxygen. But by reducing it, and the symbol for a reduction agent, or reducing agent is an H with square brackets around it, uh, we originally had two oxygen bonds. Well, now we only have one oxygen bond, and moreover, we have an extra carbon-hydrogen bond. So this aldehyde or ketone has been reduced to an alcohol. Similarly, we can reduce alkenes into alkanes. We had a C double bond C and only two hydrogens bonded to this carbon, or two hydrogens bonded to this carbon in this case over here. But by reacting with the reducing agent, we have added on an extra hydrogen. So we've broken up this double bond, freeing two extra bond sites, one on either carbon, and those extra bond sites have been added on with uh, hydrogens. All right, so let's take a moment to see how well you're doing so far. If you could please pause the video and answer this question. And here are the answers. So this one is a substitution reaction because essentially you're substituting the hydroxyl group for bromine instead. All right? Nothing was added on, nothing was subtracted. Instead, you have replaced uh, the two functional groups. And the second one over here is an addition reaction because where as you had a double bond originally, what we have done is we've broken the double bond, freed up two extra bond spaces, and filled them up with chlorine. So you have added something on. You haven't taken something else. You haven't really substituted anything. It is a pure addition. Finally, the last one is elimination reaction. Uh, originally, we had a chlorine. Well, the chlorine's missing now. It's gone. So with that uh, extra bond gone, we've collapsed it over here and turned it into a double bond, and you've produced a hydrogen halide on the other side. Again, if you please pause the video at this point and try this question, let me know which reaction is oxidation and which one's reduction. And here we have the answer. For 2A, it's an oxidation reaction. Originally, you only had uh, two bonds to the oxygen. Now you have three bonds to the oxygen, so more bonds to the oxygen, oxidizing. Over here, we have a double bond that had been broken apart, and we now have two extra bond sites that we have filled with hydrogens instead. And so less bonds, uh, or rather more bonds with hydrogen, so it is a reducing or a reduction reaction. Over here we had four bonds with oxygens, and now at the end we only have one bond with an oxygen, so again it is a reduction reaction. One last time, please pause the video and answer this question. So the first one is an addition reaction, whereby you're adding on two hydrogens by breaking this bond, allowing you to have two extra spots, and you fill them out with hydrogens, and now you're just an alkane. The second one is a substitution, or condensation, or dehydration reaction. Dehydration because you have water popping out. Condensation because you have two small molecules combined to form one large molecule over here. Finally, the last one over here is an addition reaction because you're taking the OH, tacking it on over here to form this hydroxyl group. And also putting an H over here, whereas it used to be CH2, now it is CH3. This one over here is an oxidation reaction because, well, you only had one bond with an oxygen at first, but now you have two bonds with the oxygen.